Hi, and welcome to another Book Talk with Tracy. Recently, I've been doing some interviews with other authors, and I thought I would share them on Book Talk. Uh, especially, uh, we've been talking about a new anthology that's coming out, and I had the opportunity and privilege to interview uh, several of the contributors to that anthology. And so I thought I would uh, share those interviews with you. I really hope that you enjoy them as much as I enjoyed uh, conducting those interviews. So without further ado, here's the next book talk. So I'm here today with my friend Brenda Leyland, and she is an Inscribe member, and she has contributed to a new anthology that's coming out uh, called Creativity and Chaos, Endeavors for Trying Times. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful anthology, and it's so good to see you, Brenda. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, yes. It's uh, I've, I've really been enjoying um, my little chats with uh, some of the various contributors. And I have to say it's been lovely because there's such a wonderful variety in this book. There's devotionals, there's poetry, there's memoir. And I see that you have a piece. Uh, it's under the title Reflections. But it's called A Kaleidoscope of Creativity. So that sounds interesting to me. Do um, you want to just tell us a little bit about that piece? All right. So um, the, the, it, the first inspiration of it is uh, th the title of the anthology, you know, antho you know, Creativity and Chaos. For some reason, I've always liked the idea. I always feel inspired when there's something chaotic to fix it. So this sort of inspired me to say, well, you know, let's see what we can do in the chaos of it. And for me, the piece was um, inspired because of the global pandemic. So um, I thought, what could I write about that would I could share in this anthology? So, so first of all, I was inspired by the name Creativity and Chaos. And then, of course, I was inspired when I started to watch on social media when it started to light up in the beginning weeks of the pandemic, there, you know, there was the chaos of the news media and all the scary things and all that kind of stuff. But I started watching all kinds of creative people all of a sudden stepping up and, and doing all kinds of interesting things. And they would share stuff online and say, well, I'm right. One, you know, one fellow decided he was going to read all of Shakespeare's sonnets. So that's what he did for 300 and however many how many there are every morning he'd have a new one so anyway so i so that inspired me because i was thinking well what could what could i do to be part of that because you know i watch things on social media i'm on facebook and i was on twitter or whatever it's called x called now and right, now right, yeah. so um i thought well in my small world what what could i do so I'm a blogger, you know, I, I, I blog, I've been blogging since 2008. That's my favorite place to, to write. And I thought, well, what could I, could I do here? I was, I was blogging maybe once a week or once every couple of weeks. And so I thought, well, let me blog every day for a little while and see if I could just be part of that group that says, well, you know, you're not alone. You're stuck in your house and all by yourself, but you're not alone. We're all in this together. So that's what I started doing. I, I started blogging. And then, um, and that, that was the thing that, that um, I found um, inspiring for me in, the, in this place, but just, just to also be sane while you're in the middle of all this, because there's all kinds of people doing all kinds of neat things that says I can, I can inspire people to keep going on and carry on. With, with life in the, in, in the small place that we were now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's a personal essay in the reflections set category. And, and so I'm just sharing sort of my little experiences that I, that I um, did while I was stuck During at home. Time. Yeah. Well, a couple things jumped out at me um, from what you just said. And, and yes, I mean, I think we all saw those kinds of things. I hadn't heard about the fellow reading, you know, uh, the sonnets, but, you know, everybody was baking and they were building and people were sewing and, you know, and it's true, like all kinds of creative things. 
and doing new things. Um, for myself, I actually started learning German because I had something I had always wanted to do. So, you know, we were all doing different things because like you say, we were stuck at home and and why not use that time productively? Otherwise, I think, you know, you would kind of go a little stir crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and and then yeah. the other thing that uh, jumped out at me, you were talking about your blog. And I, I've been following your blog for years. And it's it's a lovely blog. I love, you know, sometimes you share homes, but you often share beautiful photography because you are a photographer and you do like often flowers and just really beautiful things. Thank you. Yeah. Tell uh, what's the name of your blog again? It's um it's called It's a Beautiful Life. It's a beautiful uh, life. Yeah. Beautiful life. Uh beauty has always been an inspiration. It's a, and it took me many years to actually recognize that beauty was the thing that inspired me at the very core. And uh when I recognized that, I said to the Lord, you know, I asked God, well, what could I do about that? You know, like I just see this is the thing that inspires me. So I'm I'm believing you gave that to me. And so I'm inspired by the world around me, the beauty that you see in the gardens and in nature and in the skies and in the oceans. And, and then I'm also inspired by all those artists and artisans and craftsmen and people who just do amazing things to keep our world going yeah. and add beauty to it. So, so that that's, so then, then I try to blog in, in that, in that vein of how to keep looking for the little things that, and the big things that make life worth living because it's beautiful. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's what you do a lovely job. Like I say, I, you know, you, your, your writing um, is very poignant and, and I often find it just exactly sort of the little encouraging nugget that I needed for that day. <laughs> where can people, where can people follow you or find your blog? So it's at beautiful.wordfromhome.com is the, is the link. So beautiful dot word from home dot com yeah and i just and encourage I, anybody like you should follow brenda's blog because it's lovely and it's very you know you're non-partisan and i mean you know you don't get too uh carried away with you know politics or any of that stuff you really do just focus on the beauty of life and like you say artists or or nature it's it's lovely yeah thank you and that's what i do try to focus on because we need a space that's just a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a re regrouping where you can go and just be quiet for a minute and then then go back into the fray of life. But at least there's this one little place that's a little recluse. Yeah, it's like ref a little refreshment instead of, yeah. all, you know, being on edge. Um, so how did that work out for you? Like during that time, you you said you tried to do it every day. Have you kept that up or did that? No. Sort of so I went, I went back to my, what I do once a week. I used to, when I started blogging, I was very uh, happy to do it every day. But after a while you get to the place, well, I have a, I have another life. I have to live outside of that. So you can't be doing that all the time. And, um, and so now I'm happy with the, my sweet spot of once a week. I, everybody knows that I try to post on Fridays. That's what I try to do as much as possible. And so, People come by and see if I've got something new, and for the most part, I do. And uh, so, so yeah. So, but in that moment, the one of the things that I did was I went to my bookshelves. You know, when you go go visiting, uh, the first thing I look for is people's bookshelves in their houses. Is where's the books? You know, and I, when I, I we used to visit when I was a kid. Uh, that was if I saw books on a shelf somewhere, that was where I was gravitating because you never know what kind of interesting books might be on that shelf. So I decided to look at my own bookshelves. You can't come to my house, but I could share some of those books on, on my blog. So I did that for a short season, you know, in the very beginning when everything was just locking down and um, something very interesting happened to me, but I think I won't tell that so that you can go read the story. Okay. Yeah. No spoilers. Came, yeah. I, I don't want any spoilers, but there was something that was came, kind of came out of my blogging, a certain book where the author got in touch from with me from the Netherlands. And I, anyways, it was a lovely little story. And I thought, well, that just made everything worth it. You know, like, and it was a book I bought 20 years ago and he had written, well, of course, written it 20 years ago. And the reason he got in touch with me was he says, 
I'm just looking to see if there's any of my old books still out there floating around. And he says, and your blog came up. So, so we had a nice little chat on our email. And eventually one day in the mail comes his autograph. He said, what you, well, he asked if I would enjoy his autograph, of course. So he, I gave him his at my address and, and off on all of a sudden there was this little note and some photographs and yeah, it was kind of cool. And so that was one of those little fun little highlights that came out of my doing something during during the COVID. I I yeah. like that story because it really shows sort of that reciprocal um, encouragement, if you will, because I'm sure that was really kind of exciting and encouraging for you to think, oh, somebody's actually reading my blog or caring about what I say. And then for him too, to, to find that someone was, you know, caring about what he had written. Um, 20 years ago. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. I think one of the things I've noticed that's come out of some of the interviews I've been doing um, is this two things are happening. Like people are using their creativity, whether it be blogging or whatever other creative thing they're doing, sewing or painting or whatever. Um, and it's it's a way of processing and it's a, almost like therapy and it's their own way of making sense of their life. So there is personal value. And then how then sometimes what they're doing also is affecting somebody else and encouraging somebody else you know so it's like there's these two parallel things happening that are that are for both the person creating and those who are responding to what um has been created yes well you know that's what that's what really drew me to blogging in the end was because um you can have in, an immediate audience you post that thing, and if you've got a small, or small or large following, there's already somebody looking at it before you hardly pressed publish. That's what I find. There's already people already coming towards it from the ether somewhere, and um, and so what I enjoy about that is to receive the comments. Is there's that feeling of that reciproc reciprocity? Is that the right way you say that? Um, where where I've sent something out and now somebody's responding to it. And I find, I, I think I would miss that in a, in a book because you're not getting that instant feedback, which I find my love language is words of affirmation. So I take that very hard, very much to heart. So um, yeah, maybe, maybe that's why blogging is my sweet spot because I, I do enjoy getting, and of course there is always the, the downside of that was if you're only looking for what the comments you get back, well, you could be quite disappointed if nobody responds because some days life is busy and other people are doing other things and your stuff is just sitting there. And, and I've had to learn to say that's okay because I wrote it. I'm happy with it. You know, I put my best effort in to, at this moment. It was the best I could do today and, uh, and be happy with that too. And whether you get a response or not, but, for blogging yeah. on the most there's that back and forth that I love I have to admit that like I do I read a lot of stuff like blogs and different things that come across my desk and because I I do read a lot I don't always respond you know <laughs> so I well I mean who's got time right yeah you don't have time. yeah I mean you got another life to live yeah and it's true like with a book so you know you, you think about say reviews and so a, a book review is similar and yet it's not because it's not that same sense of immediacy that like you say when people are commenting on on a blog post or even on a social media post or whatever um, there is that sense of you know they're immediately and you have that more of a personal connection happening. yes yeah yeah yeah, I do like that personal feeling yeah like and I guess that's what social media has kind of given us to have that instant yep. where it makes me wonder how the Margaret Atwoods of the world and the Tracy Krauses have lived with that response coming later on. Yeah. You know, you get the responses from people saying, yes, this book was helpful to me or yeah. you know, I'm glad for it. But so in terms of your, your overall writing journey, um, so I know that, you know, blogging has been kind of your primary thing, but I know you've, you've had other pieces um, published in other anthologies and maybe in other publications and, and stuff like that. Um, how does that compare to, you know, in the in your overall writing life, so to speak? 
Well, it took me a little bit to sort sort that out because, of course, I, I guess as a when you know as I started thinking about wanting to be a writer, and that came to me in my thirties when I was in my thirties, I started thinking about that. I followed L. M. Montgomery life journey and her journals and her poetry and stuff not just I mean the Anne books and all those books were a great joy as a child but I started following her as a an adult and really enjoyed her so she was my inspiration about writing and so in my 30s I, I started thinking about I like to write like like Lucy Maud Montgomery because she writes about beautiful things and she writes about beauty in the world around her and, and then she would write it beautifully I thought I I would like to try to do that. So that's what he, what's what I did. And then of course in that, you always think, well, there might be a book somewhere in there. And there still might be, but I, I, I started a memoir a few years ago that is just sort of there. I, I even joined up with one of the writing buddies and we were going to, ah, oh, that's going to finish that, but it's still just there. And, uh, I said to her one day, I said, you know what, I'm, I'm coming up and getting closer to my 70s, scary, mm -hmm. um, coming up into my 70s one of these days. And uh, it doesn't feel as important anymore as when I first started with, when it was in my 60s, like mm -hmm. in my just turning 60, that felt like the right time. And I think if I would have finished it, then I should I should have, but I didn't. There was other stuff going on in my life. And yeah. So now I don't know if I answered your question, but writing a book is not as important as it, I thought it might be. And it, if I do it one day, that's fine. And if I don't, I'm doing things for my family. Like I'm writing stories down for my mom and and her stories. She wrote some of them herself. She a, was a little blogger herself, not to a audience, just to her family. Nice. And we've always had that. And so I was trying to do that to help her with that so those kinds of more family kind of orient oriented things huh. and I was thinking <clears throat> as you were speaking there um you know just to throw out a little idea and you can take it or leave it <laughs> but I'm sure you know you could probably gather together you you probably have hundreds and hundreds of blog posts right and um well they're they're in the thousands now thousands well there you go and you know i'm i'm thinking man you could you probably have several books there where you could gather those together into collections maybe thematically or whatever just sort of the best of the best of brenda <laughs> there's a I, <laughs> yes i like that i have thought of that too and it's sort of on the list on the list of possibilities and i keep thinking i should download all my blog posts because I'd hate for them to disappear and never show up again but yeah because there's quite a few and so there's a my blog and then of course I've got quite a few on the inscribe blog too now that are meaningful to me too so it's like maybe you're right maybe that's the time to do that pull those together and create you never know but like you say then you know a person gets busy and there's you know time constraints and things but as the Lord leads, right? I mean, yes, I mean. <laughs> As the Lord leads. Well, it needs a quickening on the inside. Exactly. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yes, exactly. Because if it's a chore and it's a and a burden, then it's probably not the right thing to do. Probably not. Yeah. yeah. I was going to read one little thing. I would love that. From from one, one quote from my piece. Perfect. My piece, the anthology. And then just a little ending. Out of these tumultuous times, came beautiful things. My home became a true sanctuary. My mind, a creative blank, having gone into hiding at the outside, was now set free when I poured myself into something other than fretfulness and anxiety. And that was out of the little creative things that I did. So my, if I would say this would be my ending, people did extraordinary things during this time in, of the global pandemic. Some started new books, others created art and heirloom quilts and whatever. I had no interest in taking on anything large. During chaotic times, my soul tends to go inward and go quiet. And for me, during this time, I did ordinary things in my ordinary life. But it all became part of the kaleidoscope of creativity that emerged from chaotic times. And that makes me feel happy mm. and blessed. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. And what? Are, and you're right. That's a great place to end. <laughs> to all right. That. So I am so thankful and grateful uh, to have talked to you today. And it's been lovely to see you again. And hopefully we'll see you again soon. 
Um, Thank you so much, Tracy, for inviting me today. It was good. I'm enjoy I really enjoyed speaking with you. Oh, good. Well, God bless you. And uh, we will talk again soon. Thank you. Right, Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks again for joining me on Book Talk with Tracy. As always, I invite you over to my website, which is tracykraus.com, no E in Tracy, two S's in Kraus, where you can find all of my books and plays, as well as other recommendations. Bye for now.